Hello everyone! Right, today we're going to be looking at doing a pastel drawing and for our inspiration of this project we're using Animal Eyes. I've got this amazing image here of an emu by Brett Sayers. It's all royalty free from Pexel so check out the website. Loads of brilliant artistic Photoshop photos for you to use for your various projects. Now I'm using soft pastels for this workshop and I've got it in various different forms. So first of all I've got some Conte crayon soft pastels down here so they're a bit smaller, I can do the detail in a little bit later. They're also harder. I've got some Unison uh, and I've particularly gone for the orange and the yellows for the Unison so they're going to be really zappy and bright when I use them. I then have some pastel pencils in the colours that I can see in this reference image. So I have white. I've got a yellow, an orange, a blue, a turquoise, a green, and then I have a black pastel pencil, and I always have a charcoal pencil for taking the well, taking the dogs a little bit more stronger towards the dark side. I have a putty rubber, and I have a brush so that I can just blend out and smooth few things in in a nice, easy, controlled manner. So it's just a cheap, synthetic brush, nothing too flashy. As for paper, this is pastel paper, just out of the range, so it's a really good bargain price. And I've gone for an eggshell blue, eggshell blue, blue eggshell, I don't know which way around that goes, but you get the gist of what I'm talking about. It's kind of in between a blue and a grey, it's a nice neutral shade for something like this. So to get started, first of all you need to make sure on your paper that you have the correct aspect ratio. You can see here using a white pastel pencil I've drafted a slightly bigger but correct aspect ratio onto my drawing paper. I've then found the centre point of that piece of paper, okay, well the, the drawing which is just there. Using a ruler, measure across and find the centre point. I've also found the centre point in my reference image. So you can see there's a little white cross that I've put there, that's not from the picture, that is a marking so that I can anchor this point of my drawing to that point of the reference image and it will make it a lot more realistic and easy to draw. Now with this, because white shows up quite nicely on it, it's a grey light tone, I would recommend using white. If you go wrong, you can use a putty rubber and rub it out. If you've decided to go for a dark colour, which will work really well with this, you know, the black will make this orange really quite piercing if you want to go down that road. Um, you'll probably find, again, the white is a good choice. There's at no point really, if I think of any colour where you need to use black, the white's quite strong. Okay, so to get off, you know, to get to get things moving, let's right. So you need to make sure that your pastel pencils are nice and sharp. You can see here I've already gone over everything with a knife, and then I've just used an emery board to shape the ends to a little bit more of a point to make it easier to handle. I'm going to start drawing in this eye. So first of all, I need to look at the width of the eye. If I take that width measurement, and I can use my pencil if I wanted to, or you could use a ruler, and then underneath I'm just going to drop it down. So the width here is equal to the drop down here. So let's say if I go that wide and I bring that down, that looks about right. You can see it's got a little bit of an arc, and then you've got that curve of the lens of the eye coming down here. Going up. I'm just going to check. I need to bring that down a little bit more. A little bit higher. See how I'm not hugely polished. You've got multiple lines here. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. And I've got that arc of the feathers coming up over the top. And that part. You can see how you counteract things. You feel it, you're going slightly off tangent, don't worry, just counteract it. Then take your putty rubber and remove any errors. Try and get it back to a nice 
course, but drawing style. This gap's much smaller in here. That's given us some bare vibes. I'm going to slide my hand down and start getting a little bit more of an accurate drawing sorted out for this. You can see here I'm just taking my potty rubber and getting that in there like so. So you should end up with something just like this. Now with something like this, you're probably wise also to have a piece of um, paper or a bit of tissue, tissue paper. So that, just a bit of tissue paper, just so that you can lean on it without smearing work. I reckon really, if you're right-handed, you might find it easier work left to right. Um, if you're left-handed, you will probably find it easier working that way. Personally, I'm going to be a bit more interesting because we've done the drawing. I want to get involved in the eye, so I'm going to do the eye and then I'm going to play around with bits. Don't worry too much about working left to right or right to left. Remember, you can always turn the paper round and upside down to make it comfortable and make sure that your hand isn't leaning on it. So let's start off with the eye. First of all, you can see this yellow and you can see the orange. So I'm going to grab... Uh, a yellow that I think is quite suitable, it's such a hard hard line as you can tell and I've got a piece of orange here okay. I'm going to put down my yellow first so I'm working light to dark ultimately and just putting that in where my yellow is going to be and I might want a little bit of orange going over the top and purposely getting that cross contamination Bring in a little bit of the orange. And with this, I'm starting to try and work it into that yellow and the leaf sections that I want to leave. But the yellow is mixing in some areas with the orange, and in other areas is pure orange to give me a zappy, sharp tone. If you look at this, you can see the shadow working up here. So I'm just working into it, but I'm not putting huge amounts of orange because I do want to keep that probably going towards a darker brown. At this point, I'm going to grab some of um, a little bit more of a warmer hazelnut brown and work a little bit just underneath it. It's starting to give you that intro to the shadow that's coming up on that right hand side of the eye. 
sudden sharp black which can be a very harsh visual effect if you don't smooth it out. Right and then at this stage I'm going to grab my pencils and start working them up. Uh, I've got white yellow that I'm starting to build into. And I'm looking at the type of patterns that I can see how colours blend into one another and because I've got that brown in I might take a bit of yellow just smooth some of the brown into the orange using the yellow and it radiates out from that pupil crisp up my eye shape because I feel like I'm getting too bulbous out here. Not quite right. I'm just start messing about with that shape, giving it the correct angle. So you can see here, we've got the two colours going. Now for this black, I'm just going to use a brush to blend it in. Push a little bit of black around. Okay. In doing so, when you're using a brush, you'll find that it does lift off quite a lot of colour. And that you will probably need to go back in and re-establish some areas of detail and colour. And you can do this with sticks or you can do it with the pencils. It's whatever you feel comfortable. Using. Okay, now I want to take this pupil a bit darker, so I picked up my charcoal pencil and I'm just going to work the charcoal into that centre section like so okay I'm going to grab my white and put in my light Got the beginnings there of an eye. Then I'm going to take some of my white. You can see this highlight sitting on the skin around the eye. So I'm going to put down a little bit of white to start off with. 
everywhere around it to be a little bit lighter for that glow. There's obviously blue light reflecting off the skin. And I'm going to take my light blue or a turquoisey shade and I'm going to work that into my white. Mixing the white into the blue, get a little bit more of a sharper contrast when I put down the darker blue. See, just like that. Now, I've worked the darker blue in. see it's really starting to come alive okay so then we repeat the process for each individual area um, you can work in pencils well charcoal pencils or you can be working in sticks or a combination of the two but do keep an eye on which colors you're using because you'll find that you'll need to repeat them and use them in various different areas of this picture sometimes it's handy to make a note of which ones or just leave them out to the area that you know
you can see that's starting to come. Then I'm just going to put in some background. And the background's really important because it's going to throw forward the main focus of the UMU. So you will need to get that background in to really give your pastels a nice strong emphasis colour and contrast. Okay, so you should be getting something that looks like that. Okay, now it's your turn. Remember, you can use the pastels, specifically harder soft pastels, for laying down a base colour. Then once you've laid down that base colour, you can work in into it with your pastel pencils. You can blend, you can move colours around, manipulate it, and then for a really strong hit of colour here and there, you can take a nice soft pastel, which is usually an expensive pastel. So you can see these are the expensive pastel where the pigment is purer, and you will get really sharp colours. Now this can be, you can even see here, putting white over the top of black, can still see it. If it's a good quality pastel, it'll come through. Okay. I hope you had fun. I hope you've learned a little bit and it builds up a bit more confidence when you're handling them because pastels are wonderful mediums full of lots of potential and should bring you loads of joy when learning to use them. Have a lovely week and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone!